All right, we are back, and we are in Sarkonos, right? Sarkonos? Sarkonos? Pronunciation is weird. Well, we're in Karnaka. I, but I, Sarkonos, I make it a rule. State? I never, I never try to learn a proper noun in like a fantasy hey. video game or something. If I learn it, I learn it. If I don't, I don't sweat it. It's a good attitude. Sarkonos is the name of the city, the and Karnaka is the name of the island. Ah, I, I had it backwards. Oh boy. So that is a distinction I've not made. When my father grew up. Off we go then. I was informed uh, on Twitter today uh, something interesting about the dreadful whale uh, by a viewer. Um, I don't know if I should share it because it's kind of a spoiler. Are, uh, are well, we doing okay. spoiler stuff? I I am playing the game and I'm not very okay, far ahead of where we are now. Yeah. Oh, by the way, guys. Uh, yeah. So like I said, I'm playing the game and I actually went on Twitter and I asked people. Uh, so I'm going to do a first playthrough. I saw that you can play with no powers. Chris said that that was a really bad idea. Josh said that was a really bad idea. What do you guys think? And everyone else said, yeah, that's a really terrible idea. So I said, okay. Uh, I'm doing it. And I'm playing on very hard. I'm going to do it. I'm not very good at stealth games. Red Scarn hates himself, and he needs help. I basically... Basically, I do. Uh, I really like playing video games, how they're not supposed to be played, and then, like, trying to figure out how I can equalize things, like how I can even the odds. And so far, I'm having a pretty good time. The shadows in the background. I don't know if you guys can see it on the, the stream, but the, the mountains oh, have, like, this creeping zebra pattern on them. It's fine. So, this are you playing really lethally or non-lethally, Rutskern? Non-lethally, also, yes. Oh, God. Completely non-lethally, and I try I, not to be seen know, whenever possible. I could actually stand doing a no powers run if I had the abilities that make you run faster and jump higher. That's technically a powers nope. run, so... I also thought about using no bone charms, but uh, I just figured, what the heck. Oh, bone Welcome charms work up. when you haven't had them, Mark? No need. They well, the do. Oh, you powers, know what happens? Not much dust from the mine. Well, Good. obviously those are useless. You know what happens when you find a rune? Uh, what happens? You get 200 you bucks show up. every time you pick up a rune. <laughs> no, it's not on the registry. Uh, magic. I don't. You'll get anything for mana flasks, though, which kind of is annoying because I keep finding them and I keep being like, "Oh, an item! I want to pick it up," and it keeps being like, "You're full," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, of course I'm full. I don't even have a fucking mana bar." Thanks for the plague cure, lady. So, sure you is, is there it. a um, is there like a cutscene for that? Like, if you renounce his powers, does does he? Do you tell him as such? And he he says, "Oh, how, how does the game handle surprise?" That? Uh, there, you don't really state a reason for it, per se, although in your journal you have some reason. My reason is just like, okay, I'm the Empress. Uh, I will do a lot to regain my country, but it somehow seems irresponsible to indebt all of my people to a space whale. It's getting hard to breathe around here. Also, it cursed your dad? Yeah, it I feel is like what it is. <laughs> I feel like there's an arc where I learn from my dad's, like, extreme decisions and instead opt for more moderation and self-empowerment like my mother would have uh, that's it that's it's in the book uh, emily specifically says i can't imagine my mother agreeing to this so i won't either and while normally i might say that that takes the agency out of the player character in this case i think that's a really interesting comment and it dovetailed with my understanding of emily as well so i actually I, i'm really glad that this is in there i think that it's, it's a really cool option to have and i think it's an interesting way of looking at this game that dude is buff. And rough. I, I think, okay. I think Josh was just sneezing, and and I was I thought we were like looking at him for oh, a reason, well. but now I have to include that in the fucking recording. You see, <laughs> instead of editing it out, one <laughs> of the trouble of turning so, around so it won't be so goddamn loud. Can I say I played the next like the, the next two levels all the way through? Uh. And I, you know, I have to say, I found it, um, 
I found it to be like I, I if you told didn't hadn't told me that this game had powers in it, I would have believed that this was just like a proper video game. Like it, it didn't feel weird. Like there were no r crude hacks or anything. Uh, it actually was pretty seamlessly integrated. I have Is to this the native <laughs> dance? <laughs> oh god! So, are you showing me the dance of your people? I love the light. Every day I'm fish gutting. Yeah, I, I bet you love the light in the evenings down near the water. For whistling something heretical. I, I love the fact that we're in a fish gut, a fish guttery. I don't fishery. I don't even know what you would call this. Um, a but, fish but they guttery. Use... A gutteria. Oh God. Hey. Um. Come down hello. to the scenic gutteria. Uh, you how you doing? Here, we're jumping in. Okay, I don't know what that means exactly. Are these? Oh, this is where you have to come back for one of the quests. I did I not. Yeah, this is the black yeah, market area. Yeah, there are some area. side quest things, and I don't remember what what is what. Oh wait, uh, around you the other way. Have to find the body. Yeah, or, or there is a homeless guy which you can give five bucks and then steal yeah. sleep darts, which I do. Uh oh, you're Kai. Thank you. If you want to get past that wall of light, I've heard people sneaking through this. So when you say you've done the, the next two levels, you mean like this level, like this area, we'll and then the area the in the institute, or? Vanguard checkpoint. That's correct. I completed the institute area. I also uh, hit the overseer's uh, stronghold for the optional quest there, but that's in this area. So. Yeah. So we got I, a whole I, bunch of shit in this area. Pretty I have to there, say, so the, these these levels are. The most big, sprawling, you can miss entire chunks of content thing I've I've played in a long, long, long time. Oh, the level design in this game is fantastic. Uh, that, it is. It's the it, best it, thing it that's really improved. Is. I'm a customer. Oh, I think it's really impressive that I find the level design really open and engaging, Hi, considering I don't have the main powers that allow you to access all of it. Uh, yeah, the yeah, like, uh, black market's fun of on and supplies. I don't no actually need that because I know where those supplies are. I imagine it's one like guys... on a no powers run. Did you guys steal uh, from him? Uh, where's the key? I was curious about that. It's in one of the safes, I think. Huh. I, I thought about it, but yeah. Actually, to be it's honest, a, it's it wasn't a good much time. Of a point. Like so, if you're playing yeah. not, if you're playing non-lethal on a hard difficulty with no powers, basically here's what this guy has that's useful. Um, sleep darts, very very useful, uh, way too useful in fact. Uh, dart accuracy is important, and that's about it. Stun mines are like kind of a bad idea, honestly. And you don't want to be using them most of the time. Uh, bone charm slots, you know, most of them have to do with powers or killing people. Uh, and then, like, so to clarify, all of the though, other stealing items. from him, you don't actually steal like from his inventory. There's just like extra stuff in the back, like money. Oh, you don't. Yeah, he has like just stuff on his shelves, like whale oil and stuff, like crafting stuff that you can take, but just straight up money. Lamp oil? That too? If you have coin. <laughs> anyway, so what we need to do basically is uh, we need to get over to that building way over there. And the only way to get there is to get on a train. So we gotta infiltrate the train station. Mono. Is that the only way? I, mean, I guess probably. Anyway, we're gonna is, go but... get the sunken supplies that are over here because I remember where they are. Unless oh, they're I didn't randomized. Realize there were these things. That would be interesting if they were randomized. That's very 0451 to have a boat full of sunken supplies just kind of randomly out there. Uh... What am I stuck on? What the fuck? Do we, hey. you know, we're going to use that term over and over again. Uh, for anybody who hasn't caught, like, Chris's video on this, do we want to real quick, like, define 0451? Um, it is a number used in System Shock as a keypad, and 
then was used several times in games influenced by Looking Glass or by Looking Glass themselves. Uh, are we gonna drown? And then, uh, no, and then fine. was used by a lot of games influenced by Looking Glass's uh, entire sort of approach to game design, and is included hmm. in. Um, this may be this randomized, game as well. or maybe they don't show up unless you get the uh, stuff because they're supposed to be around here somewhere, but. Well, we can go back so to the, the, the the Cliff's Notes is it's used in a lot of games that pride exploration, uh, upgrades, and not necessarily linear paths uh, through to a like narrative about some kind of normal environment that's going through some kind of catastrophe. Mostly, uh, bits and pieces are you know not as strong and really present in some games, or more strongly present in others, etc. Come in, my friend. I like how you spend. Yeah. Nope. Come back <laughs> soon. I mean, if I and one more time so on I... the right, please. <laughs> so one of the things I, I like about the return of the black market in the game is that it felt way more thiefy than the way the stores used to work, which were. I believe basically just pre-mission selection stuff. Yeah, if I, remember right. I like the black market. Like in, I think in Dishonored one it was Piero who would sell you stuff, and in Dishonored uh, Knife of Dunwall it was a, just a pre-mission <laughs> select thing. All right, I'll head over there. Yeah. Actually, uh, you guys... Do you guys want to know one of the reasons I like playing without powers? What's that? Because it actually turns this game into kind of a Jason Bourne uh, video game. You're like this sort of extreme underdog with no powers or any any real reason you should be succeeding, especially on very hard, where like you die in two sword strokes. Uh, who is like on, sort of quasi on their own except for a few contacts, uh, relying on your wits, uh, your intelligence, and kind of your sneakiness and a black market contacts to get through things. It feels so, very... self -reliant. There's like an invisible wall. What the fuck? There's an invisible wall here that's pushing me through. I don't understand what's going on here. It should be right out here. This is the first column from there. But I don't... I, I can't. I get actually close really appreciate that this game has no mini map. Yeah. It's it's not hard to navigate based and on the map. Is... And there's even I like probably give up at this screen. point. I didn't but, even know you could go really in the water. Pissed off. <laughs> like I thought they were just constantly we infested go. by piranhas. Like at when you jump off the boat on the ocean. Oh hey. There are extra sleep darts down here that I can't pick up. Oh, interesting. Health oh, burn uh, by drowning upgrade. is permanently burned. It's one of those games. Wait, what? what? Uh, well, there's two what different schools of thought for video games. Uh, one is when you're drowning and you take damage, uh, that uh. damage is permanent. And the other is you recoup that damage and once you're no longer drowning. And at some point, like I think Half-Life 2 was the turning point where it crossed over and the ladder became more option. Although I think Half-Life Half -Life 1 had the same system. Anyway, and so that actually makes this game kind of an exception in that your health does not recover. So basically we can go through that house behind us, which is a condemned house of doom full of this game's version of the rats, which are the oh, blood flies, those which are fuck blood awful flies. and mean. <laughs> the artists um, did such a good job on blood flies. They're not even that bad. Yeah. They don't do that much damage, even on very hard. Like, you can just kind of run past them if you want, and they're not going to hurt you that much. But God, I'm afraid of flying insects because once, when I was 12 years old, I ran a lawnmower over a wasp's nest twice in one week, uh, and oh those God. things set me off hard. I just love all the little details that try to sell this on, like, the tropicalness of this. Like, the red, hotter color, warmer color palette. The little, uh, I don't know if you saw it while we were standing up on that ledge, but the, like, palm tree uh, fern that, that's sitting down in that ledge down there. Um, the fact that everyone keeps their windows wide open. 
The fans. Yeah, the fan. That yes, they're everywhere. And you usually do not see fans in houses and these kind of games. Yep, that's how alcohol works. Holy crap! I forgot that that's it's, a thing in this game. I don't know what it, you drink, cool. but you know. <laughs> I only drink kerosene that's just, like, stuffed full of waterproof matches. So, do you find that alcohol's really useful in your, uh, no, um... Well, I guess not, because you're doing non-lethal. Yeah, no, um, I use it against bl the blood flies, I guess, but, uh... No, I, I don't actually use, like, throwing stuff very often, because on very hard, people are pretty smart about looking for stuff, and they have really wide detection arcs. So most of the time, I throw something, and then I just get found. Like what would happen in real life? I keep trying to remember why we keep saying bloat or almost saying bloat fly, and I realized it's because of Fallout. Yeah. Yep. And also, oh, let's eat some to flies, totally, definitely it? okay potatoes. Oh, look at look at the the shadows of those fucking blood flies being cast on the wall. You, you know what this is actually giving me flashbacks to? Fucking Jumanji. Oh god. We got any more alcohol here? That was fig wine, wasn't it? Is fig wine explosive? Fig wine, no, flick it's wine wine, so fig no. wine just like... Yeah. There's alcohol in wine. <laughs> it's not a high proof liquor. Oops. Right, yeah. I'm having a strong bow cider idea. right now. It's not like if I just drop it on the table, it's gonna explode. Hopefully. Yeah, you don't know. That could actually be really bad, because like three quarters of a bottle of strong bow cider is enough to make me noticeably tipsy. I didn't realize you could destroy the um hives. So a lot you of this didn't? game I just I just was sneaking oh, past man. the entire hive. Oh man. Did did That's not realize fire did this. You. Yeah, killing the hive kills all of them, doesn't it? All the ones that, that are I think around are that the hive, ones. yes. Yeah. Yeah, see, I figured that out way too late. Huh. Like after Bone I'd charm. used all of the other explosive barrel bottles nearby. <laughs> I'm like, oh fuck me. I didn't even know you could throw alcohol at them, and it would just explode. Like, I thought you had to shoot it or something. I, nah, I, this, this game has... The, the alcohol in this game is actually a problem for an non-lethal run sometimes, because guards carry bottles of rum in hand, and if you knock them out, the bottle of rum will fall and break and set wow. everyone on fire. It's very silly. It's not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to video games, but it is very well, You silly. guys don't seem like you enjoyed this party that much. Or maybe you enjoyed the party too much. <laughs> Sass. It's not, really, it's not really a party until someone breaks out the pistol and the bloatflies are all crunk on explosive rum. I feel like picking up a pistol is the wrong reaction to being attacked by a bunch of giant... Blood wasps, but... What? But you think that attacking a bunch of hovering insects that attack in swarms with an 18th century single loading flintlock pistol is a bad idea? I don't know. By the way, I I'm aware that they're cartridge pistols. You don't 